Mora of Slice of Pie Quilts. In this video series, we'll be making projects for a nursery. Remember to use the hashtag MSQCKids when you post a photo. Let's get sewing with Missouri Star. I'm Laura of Slice of Pie Quilts here at Missouri Star. I'm going to show you how to make this streamer quilt as you go crib quilt. We're going to make the whole quilt from start to finish. We're going to cut, baste, piece, quilt as you go, which means we're quilting it at the same time that we sew the strips together, trim, bind, and add a label. We're making the whole quilt start to finish. Let's get sewing. You'll need two yards of fabric cut into varying widths of strips. I've used six different third yard cuts for this quilt. You'll need crib sized batting. You need one and a half yards of fabric for the back. You'll need one half yard of fabric for the binding. You'll need a rotary cutter and ruler, curved safety pins, a marking tool, and I'm using this free fuse basting powder. You can also use basting spray if you have it. And we'll use these sewing clips. To get started to make this quilt, we're gonna cut some strips. I'm using third yard cuts that I'm gonna cut down into two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, or six and a half inch strips. So I'm going to first line up the folded edge of my fabric, just like it came from the fabric store, with the bottom edge of my cutting mat. I, I like to use a cutting mat that's 24 inches wide so that I can lay it out. If your cutting mat is smaller than that, you may need to fold the fabric in order to get it on the mat. Just be really careful that you're not getting any wrinkles or creases in the fabric when you're folding it and use the lines on the cutting mat as a guide for where your fold should go. If it gets off, it may make your strips crooked. So try to make sure that all the fabric is as straight as possible when you make your cuts. First, I cut off any extra off the side to give myself a straight cut on one side of the strip and then I'm scooting it over and I'm gonna make a three and a half inch cut from this one. And then I can scoot it over and make another cut from this same piece of fabric. Continue with all of your fabric pieces until you have enough strips for the quilt. I've cut two strips from each of six different fabrics. So from this fabric, I've cut a five and a half inch and a four and a half inch strip. From this fabric, I've cut a two and a half inch strip and a six and a half inch strip. From this fabric, I've cut a six and a half inch strip and a three and a half inch strip. This fabric is a four and a half and a five and a half inch strip. I cut two strips from this fabric that are three and a half and four and a half inches. And this last fabric is six and a half inch strip and a two and a half inch strip. Once you have all your strips cut, then lay them out in the order that you would like to sew them. Now that you've laid out all of your strips in the order that you want to sew them, we need to prepare the backing fabric before we sew. Let me show you how to do that. You're going to need your crib size batting, and I'm using this basting powder, but you could use basting spray as well. Lay out your batting. We're going to sprinkle the powder on top and press the backing fabric to it. I'm using a one and a half yard cut of backing fabric. The crib size batting is the perfect size for this. It should have just an inch or two on each side of the backing fabric that is extra. So I wanna make sure that I'm lining up the top edge to be straight with the cut edge of the batting. Use the cut edges of the batting and the fabric as a guide to make sure that you're lining up the pieces square. If you're using this basting powder, you just sprinkle it like salt onto the batting Lay the fabric on top and press. Just press with that fusing powder on there and then the fabric and batting will be stuck together so you can sew. I'm gonna finish fusing the backing fabric to the batting and then we'll start sewing. <laughs> 
Now that I've fused the backing fabric to the batting, we're going to flip it over and add the strips. First, lay it right. Whichever strip you're going to do first, lay it right side up along the top of the quilt. You're going to check to see on the back where the fabric starts, where the backing fabric starts, and then use that as a guide to lay out this first strip. It's really important that you try to take your time and make it straight so that the rest of the strips will be as straight as possible. I'm lining up the selvage edge with the selvage edge of the backing fabric too, on both sides and the top. Once the first strip is in place, take your second strip and lay it right side down on top of the first strip. You want to line up the bottom of the strips here, and then I'm going to use pins to baste those in place. I'm using curved safety pins because it really helps go through all the layers with the batting. I placed the pins about a hand width apart and far enough away from the edge that I'll be able to sew along this bottom edge. Once you've pin basted that first strip, we're ready to go to the sewing machine. Now that you have the first strips pin basted, we're going to roll up the extra batting and backing fabric to keep it out of the way. So I'm just going to roll this up like this, and now we're ready to sew. I'm going to turn this around and keep that roll underneath the arm of the sewing machine so that I can use the right side of the, of the foot of the sewing machine along this side right here. Let me show you. So I have the bulk of the fabric underneath the arm of the sewing machine, and I'm lining up the right edge of the foot with this seam where I'm going to sew. I'm using the regular foot of the sewing machine, but you might find a walking foot to be helpful here too. I'm using a straight stitch. I have it on a two and a half inch stitch length, and I'm going to sew starting off into the batting. So before the strips, I'm gonna start in the batting, sew all the way to the other side, and sew off the other end of the batting as well. If the bulk of the fabric and the batting starts to get in the way, just stop, reposition, and then start again. After I've sewn the first strip, I just use my hand to fold back the fabric, and then we're gonna lay the next strip right side down on top of this one. You could press that down if you wanted, but it works fine to just smooth it with your hand. Then I'm gonna use the pins again to baste it in place. It doesn't matter how you pin, just as long as it's enough to hold it in place so you can move from here to the sewing machine. Roll up the extra and stitch along this side again. As you sew, if the fabric starts to bunch up, that's okay. Just take the pins out and let the fabric be longer at the end of the quilt, and then we can trim it off at the end. Just fold the strip back, smooth it out, and you're ready to add the next strip. What I really like about this pattern is it's really forgiving. It's okay if your lines aren't perfectly straight, and it's okay if the strips aren't exactly the same width, and it's fine if the seam allowance isn't exactly a quarter of an inch. Just do your best. You'll see on the back 
how the stitches are going through all of the layers. So we're quilting the quilt at the same time that we're sewing the strips together. It makes it really quick and easy. Free to follow the pattern to lay out the strips or put them in your own order. As I sew, I use my hands to roll the backing fabric taut to hold it so that there's no wrinkles underneath. Now that there's just a few strips left, there's not that much bulk in the throat of the sewing machine, but there's a lot more on the table. Using a now large that table just can a few help, strips left, and then just use your hands much bulk and go in slow. The throat of the sewing I like machine, to work only a, lot a little bit at a time, table. like right in front using of the sewing machine, table can and just help, readjust and then as just I use sew. your hands and go slow. I like to work only a little bit at a time, like right in front of the sewing machine, and just readjust as I sew. This is the last strip. Just keep adding strips until you get to the end of the backing fabric. We're going to sew this last one. This and is the last strip. This step. Just keep adding strips until you get to the end of the backing fabric. We're going to sew this last one, and then we'll be finished with this step. Now that we've sewn all of the strips, we're just going to cut off the extra backing and batting fabric and then sew on the binding. Now that we've sewn all of Let's the strips, trim off the we're just going to cut off the extra fabric. backing and Use batting fabric ruler. and then sew on and the binding. Either line up with the edge of Let's trim off the extra batting and backing fabric. Use a long ruler and either line up with the edge of the fabric of the last strip or you can even use the seam line as a guide for trimming it up. You want to make sure that when you do this cut, that you're cutting off some of the backing fabric too. When you trim off the batting, make sure that you don't see any batting at the edge of the strip. Then turn the quilt and we're going to trim off the other side. This side has the selvages left on it from when we cut the strips and so we want to make sure that we cut off the selvages on both the front and the back of the quilt. So when you line up your ruler, you can use the lines on the ruler 
and line them up with the strips that you sewed and then flip it over to the back to make sure you'll be cutting off the selvages on that side as well. And turn the quilt and do the third side. Again, when you take off this piece, check to make sure that you have backing fabric all the way to the edge on the back. It's okay if you feel like you're cutting off too much of the sides. We want to make sure that we're cutting off the selvages and that we have enough backing fabric and front fabric to put the binding on. After you cut, look at the back to make sure that you cut off enough that you don't have any of the selvage of the backing fabric showing. I'm going to cut a little more on that one. Once you've trimmed all four sides, we're ready to do the binding. Normally we cut the binding strips the width of the fabric. In this case, this fabric is printed so that if I were to cut the strips using that method, the pieces would be all one color. So I would have a purple strip or a red strip, and I'd rather have the rainbow stripes for this one, so I'm actually going to cut my binding strips the length of the fabric instead. Either way works great. Do whatever works for the fabric you're using. I've had to fold my fabric a little bit extra in order to have it fit on the mat so that I can cut safely. I'm going to cut two and a half inch strips. Four strips will be enough for this quilt. Maybe a little extra too. Now we're going to sew all of the strips together end to end to make one long strip. To sew the ends of the strips together, just lay them right sides together, line up the ends, and sew with a quarter inch seam. I actually like to decrease my stitch length for this, maybe around two. Then just find the end of that strip and add another one. When adding the strip, if you're using directional fabric, try to make sure that the strips are going the right way. Like this makes the pattern continue, but the other way did not. Now we're going to press those seams open. 
Pressing the seams open will help reduce the bulk when you sew the binding onto the quilt. Now we're going to press the entire length of this binding strip in half like this. When you get to the seam, just press it in half like you have been doing. Since you press the seams open, there's not that much bulk there and it'll really be a lot easier to sew it to the quilt. Now that you've pressed all the binding, it's time to sew it to the quilt. There are a lot of ways to sew binding to a quilt. I'm gonna show you what works for me. I suggest that you try several different ways and just pick what works for you the best. For mine, I sew it to the front of the quilt and then I stitch in the ditch to catch it on the back. I'll show you here in a minute. Start by leaving a tail of binding and we're gonna sew down here, maybe like 10 inches from the end of the binding strip and we're going to line up the raw edges with the raw edge of the quilt and just sew with a quarter inch seam all the way around the quilt. I'm going to put my stitch length back up at 2.5 and this is another time that a walking foot might come in handy. When you get to the corner, you want to stop a quarter inch away from the corner. So just stitch right up into that spot and then stop with the needle down when it's a quarter inch away. Lift the presser foot, turn the quilt, and sew right off of the corner. Then put the needle up, pull the quilt away from the machine, and we can turn to sew the next side. You're going to fold the binding strip straight up so that the raw edges on the right side are in a straight line. It should make a 45 degree angle right to the corner. Then fold the strip back down so that it's a straight line across the top and then we can sew down the right side. As you come around the last side, you want to stop about 10 or 12 inches from where you started sewing. Then remove the quilt from the machine and we're going to sew the two ends of the strips together. So you have the two tails of the strips that you need to put together. You want to trim them so that they are shorter than where you started sewing and where you ended. So I've trimmed mine to be, oh, about eight inches long because that's about the distance when I started and stopped sewing. So now I started sewing here and I stopped sewing here and I wanna find the middle of that. So it's about here. I'm going to mark all of the layers of fabric with a marking pen or pencil. I just draw a little tiny line on the ed right next to the raw edge of the fabric on all layers. I mark both sides so that I'll be sure to know exactly where to sew. Now take the two ends of the binding strips and put them right sides together. Try to be careful not to twist them when you do this step. Now line up the marks that you just made and fold the rest of the quilt out of the way. We're only worried about sewing these two strips together. See where I marked my lines? Just line up the two strips right sides together. Now we'll take it back to the machine and sew right along that line to sew these together. I am going to decrease my stitch length to 2.0 again, just so it's a little sturdier. Now, before you trim those tails off, pull the quilt taut and see how you did. 
If there's a twist, now's the time to redo it. Mine looks pretty good, so I'm gonna cut off those tails. I'm going, to, I'm going to cut a quarter inch away from the seam. Be careful that you don't cut through the part you wanna keep. Now, press that seam open or finger press it open. Fold it back in half. And then we're going to continue stitching along that edge. I start sewing just before where I stopped sewing before so that the stitches overlap a little bit. I do the same at the end, just overlap the stitches a little bit and then lift the needle and you're ready for the next step. I like to press this binding over so that it's easier to sew. All I do is use my left hand to fold it back and quickly press it with the iron. When you get to the corner, just iron both sides and keep going all the way around. Once you've pressed it all the way around, flip it over and we're going to press it again on this side. This will give the binding a memory so that it'll stay better in place when we sew it. When you get to the corner, just pull up on the binding and then do one side at a time. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to do this side first. Just fold it over, make sure, making sure it's taut underneath there with the fabric right up against the batting. Then press all the way off the corner. Then do the other side. Just fold it over and it'll make a nice 45 degree angle in the corner. This is a great time that you can use quilt clips or sewing clips to hold it into place too. Now let's take it to the sewing machine and finish the binding. Now that you've pressed the binding, we're going to take it to the machine and machine sew it. I like to stitch in the ditch from the front and it'll catch the binding on the back at the same time. So as you can see right here where the binding and the fabric of the, fa of the quilt top come together, that's called the ditch. So I want the needle to be in the ditch the whole time I sew. It's important that you stitch slowly so that it stays in the ditch. I use my right hand to kind of roll under the binding fabric to make sure that it's where we pressed it. And then I just sew down here. I'm only going to sew this length of the machine bed at a time. Then stop, readjust, and start again. When you get to the corner, you want to keep sewing in the ditch and then stop with the needle down right in the corner. I'll take the clip off as I get close. Then lift the presser foot, turn the quilt, and keep sewing down the other side. over the quilt, you'll be able to see the stitching line right along the edge of the binding. This is how you know that it's all, all the raw edges are sealed up inside there and you're doing a great job. As you sew, try to keep the needle in the ditch, but it's okay if you get out of the ditch. It's not like driving. 
As you get to the last corner, I have this clip here to remind me, it's time to sew in the label. These are the labels that I use. They just sew right into the binding so they're quick and easy. There's a video all about labels that we'll link to in the description so you can make your own. Then just keep sewing in the ditch. Stop with the needle down when you get to the corner, lift the presser foot, and turn. Now we're on the last side. Here comes the finish line. Just sew past where you started a little bit, and then back stitch. Once you've sewn all the way around, flip the quilt over and look to see how you did sewing your binding. You wanna make sure that the stitches are on the binding and they've sealed up the quilt all the way around. Oh, I found a spot that didn't catch. So right here, my stitches did not catch on the binding. It's a quick fix, let me show you how. Take it back to the machine. It usually just means that you didn't pull the binding tight enough or you didn't stitch close enough in the ditch. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to pull it tight on the back again. Then I'm gonna go forward and backwards whenever I start and when I stop. And check it again. Now it caught on the back. So I'm all done. Look at that. You made a whole quilt. Now you know how to make a streamer quilt as you go crib quilt. Remember, you can use different widths of strips and you can use any fabrics. They'll all look great. You can use a thread color that matches the backing fabric, like I used white for this one, or you can use your favorite color. I used aqua on this one. You've learned how to cut, piece, quilt as you go, trim, bind, and add a label. You've made a whole quilt. Remember, post a photo and use the hashtag MSQCKids so we can share in your excitement. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial from Missouri Star. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.